hello everyone welcome to module 2 so in module 2 we'll talk about motion in one dimension so before we enter into motion in one dimension in physics 1 we are going to discuss three parts of physics mechanics we're going to discuss thermodynamics and we'll be discussing finally vibration and waves so initially we are going to discuss mechanics first so mechanics is going to cover about uh, eight chapters thermodynamics will cover about three or four chapters and then finally we'll cover vibration and waves in two chapters so let's start with mechanics So the word mechanics comes from the Greek word mechanica. So which basically refers to the term motion. So mechanics here is the study of motion. So how bodies move is what is mainly defined by mechanics. Now when we talk about motion here we are talking about motion of particles or motion of bodies or objects so this can range from a small uh, body for example a small football on the earth all the way to that of a planet to a star or to a galaxy so all of them the motion is the same motion is the type that changes but we are describing the same mechanics of all the things that we refer to here so we saw we can start from a small object like a football or a tennis ball to a planet to a star to a galaxy so this is how we can refer to the mechanics of mechanics in general so we divide mechanics into two types so two parts we can split it into two parts so the first part is kinematics the second part is dynamics Kinematics refers to the study of the path of motion. Here in dynamics, we try to study the cause of motion. So think of this as effect and cause. So cause and effect. So dynamics studies the cause of motion and kinematics studies the path or the effect of motion. So what makes the body itself? So here the body itself is not considered, but here in dynamics we only consider the body itself and what is happening to the body. So here we only consider the path of the body, here we consider the cause of motion of the body. So these are the two types. So initially we are going to discuss the first two chapters, which are module 2 and module 3 will focus on kinematics, where we talk about motion in one dimension and motion in two dimension, and we will also talk about vectors. From the next part we will talk about dynamics, so dynamics deals with forces, and uh, the laws of motion by Newton. We are going to discuss more about it as we go along in the lecture. Now let's start about kinematics. So in kinematics we are going to discuss two parts. So one is motion in one dimension and motion in two dimension. So first we are going to discuss motion in one dimension. So think of this as a straight line motion. So motion in one dimension is basically a straight line motion. So what happens to the body as it moves in one single dimension either this can be upward or downward or forward or backward but remember this is this should be a straight line motion so either it should be upward or downward or forward or backward so in this section so in this particular module we're going to discuss three sections section one deals with displacement and velocity Section 2 deals with acceleration. Section 3 deals with falling objects. We will discuss what are these terms and what is the section as we go along in the lecture. So let's get into section 1. So in section 1, we are going to talk about displacement and velocity. So what are the objectives in this section? So first we are going to try to describe the motion in terms of frames of reference, displacement, time and velocity. And we are going to try to calculate the displacement of an object traveling at a known velocity for a specific time interval. And finally, we will try to construct and interpret graphs of position versus time. So let's start with a one dimension of motion. So as we discussed, to simplify the concept of motion, we generally discuss motion in terms of 
the direction. Here we are only considering one direction. So an example of this would be a train moving on a track or a straight track. And to measure motion here, always remember that whenever you want to measure motion, you need to have what we call as a frame of reference. What is a frame of reference is basically a system for specifying the precise location of objects in space and time. Let's say for example, uh, let's say you are standing on the side of a track. So let's say you are standing on the side of a track. And you are looking at a train that's moving on a track at a relative, uh, uh, it's moving on a track. Now for you to know whether that particular body is moving or not, so the only way you know that is because you are stationary, meaning that you are at rest and the train here is in motion. How do you know it's in motion is because if you construct your eyes as your frame of reference so what you are looking at so with with time this particular object is moving with time so this line of sight is actually is what is changing so your line of sight here is the frame of reference so this here becomes the frame of reference so whenever there is a change at the change of motion change of the body's position at that frame of reference so we call that motion so remember that motion is only when you have a fixed frame of reference and the body is changing as as it moves along the frame of reference. So the same thing happens with uh, a simple a simple example of this would be a train station. So let's say a train is coming into the station. How do you know it's coming into the station? Is because the station is stationary, and the body the train itself is in motion. How do you know when a train moves out of the station? Is because it's trying to move completely out of the station by moving itself from that frame of reference to another frame of reference. So this is the idea behind the term frame of reference. Now, so with that in mind the frame of reference, next let's talk about displacement. So what is displacement? So displacement in simple sense is the change of position of a body. So remember that there is a difference between displacement and distance because distance only considers, the distance considers the entire path of, entire path traveled but displacement so let's consider the difference here between distance and displacement so let's say you're at this position here you're on a you're on your bicycle on a straight road and you're traveling let's say 10 meters to a shop let's say a grocery shop and you're driving back home so you started here and you ended here so this is the start and this is the end so when you say what is the distance that you have traveled the distance that you have traveled is the path so distance considers the path traveled so length of the path so what is the length of the path here is first you travel 10 meters and you are coming back 10 meters. The total path traveled here is 20 meters. But when you consider the displacement, displacement here is the difference between the initial and the final positions. So the difference between the initial and final positions or let's simply say that the shortest distance between the initial and final positions. So what is the shortest distance, so let's call it the shortest length. The shortest length between the initial and final. So because you have started and ended at the same position, in this scenario your displacement is 0 meters. The main reason is because you have started at the same point where you have ended. So the start and end are at the same point. So the displacement is 0 meters. While the dis distance might be 20 meters, the displacement here might be 0 meters. Let's say if you are just calculating the distance between, let's say if this is the start point and this is the end point. So let's say if this is the end point, then your distance is 10 meters and you also your displacement is also 10 meters. Because you are in a straight line motion, there is no shortest path, no other shortest length than the distance itself. So that gives you the difference here between the distance and displacement. And also another say another important one to remember is that displacement distance is a scalar while displacement is a vector.
So distance here only considers the magnitude of the quantity, but it doesn't consider the direction. So there is no direction. For example, how much distance did you travel? You would say 20 meters. But when you ask about displacement, so displacement is a vector which considers both magnitude and direction. For example, what is your displacement? So the displacement is 10 meters east or west or south or north. So this way, you're actually describing the direction as well as with the along with the magnitude. So from this, you can almost also learn the two types of quantities, scalars and vectors. A scalar is a physical quantity that has magnitude but no direction. A vector is a quantity that has magnitude and direction. So you consider both of these things to be present as a vector. So whenever you call something a vector, there should be mentioned with both magnitude and direction. So an example of the scalar is distance, vector is displacement. Because you're going to see a lot of different quantities that are scalars and vectors, that's how you can differentiate them. So why is distance a scalar? More because we do not consider the direction. So whenever you, uh, whenever you ask someone, uh, how far, let's say how much distance did you travel, you only tell them, let's say five kilometers or six kilometers, but you don't tell them which direction you're going in. Let's say, for example, if somebody asks you, where are you going? Then you would say, I would go, say, for example, how far are you going and which direction are you going? So that would be considered as displacement. So that's the difference here between displacement and distance. And remember that this, because displacement is a vector, it can be positive as well as negative, provided depends on the initial and the final position and the frame of reference in which the body is traveling in. Next, let's talk about velocity. So velocity in simple sense. So let's talk about velocity next. So velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So if you remember from algebra, so whenever you see the term rate of change, it basically means with time. So if you consider, so let's consider the displacement to be represented by x. So rate of change of displacement is delta x uh, over change in time. So this is velocity. This is called as average velocity. So we can divide velocity into two types. One is the average velocity. And the second one is instantaneous velocity. So average velocity is total distance so the total displacement by total time instantaneous velocity it only considers so it's the velocity at an instant of time so velocity at an instant of time so whenever we consider total displacement that's why we write the term delta x by delta so instantaneous velocity v is basically the limit of delta t tends to 0, delta x by delta t. So what is this fancy term is basically showing you that this is an instant of time. So it's an instant of time. It's a really small amount of time. So we can cut short this and we can write the term dx by dt. So whenever you see the term d here, so d here refers to very, very small interval of time, very, very small interval of distance over very, very small interval of time. So this is the idea behind velocity, average velocity here. So velocity, because it's displacement by time, so the units of displacement is meter, the units of time is second, so the unit of velocity is meter per second or meter second inverse. So this is how we can talk about velocity. Next, let's talk about two separate quantities, velocity and speed. So velocity here and speed here, the difference here is that the velocity is the rate of change of displacement while speed is the rate of change of distance. So speed, average speed can be written as distance traveled by the time of travel. So velocity describes both a direction and a numerical value. For example, uh, 
uh, if somebody asks you where are you going you will say let's say for example i am going uh, 50 kilometers east or 50 kilometers west but uh, what's your speed then you would say for example let's say i'm traveling at 50 km per hour because here there's no direction mentioned there's only magnitude value mentioned so speed and velocity are two, two separate terms next let's talk about how to interpret velocity graphically so whenever we talk about graphs we're going to think about two one main type of graph we call it a position time graph so we're going to take two axes in the two axes we're going to consider one as position so always remember that the x-axis is always going to be time and the y-axis will be the position now in this here so how do you interpret velocity here so let's consider three situations in our position time graph where you would see a straight line a line with a positive slope and a line with a negative slope so let's consider the first situation here where we had a line with a positive slope so let me paste another one So let's consider it here we have a positive slope. Now how do you interpret velocity here? So remember that velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So it's the change in displacement by change in time. If you consider the same here, so dx represents position and time is represented by t. So this basically represents the slope. So because this basically represents delta y change in y by change in x, remember that delta y by delta x is similar to delta x by delta t here because the y axis represents position and x axis represents time. So delta y by delta x is the slope m here. So the slope here, the slope here itself represents the, so this is delta x here and this is delta x. So the slope here represents the velocity now for a line that's having a forward slope so when you have m positive so this means here it's having an increasing so because the slope is the same so slope is positive and constant throughout the entire path of the motion so which means this is a topic of uniform velocity so this is an example of uniform velocity and here uniform positive velocity so because here the body is traveling forward so we can consider it here that the velocity is positive now whenever you have a positive slope it's a uniform positive velocity what if you have a negative slope so let's consider a case where we had negative slope so let's consider that we have a negative slope like this. So notice that here the slope would be negative. So if m is negative, which means it's also constant, but here it's a negative velocity. So because it's a negative velocity. What if you have a straight line, a parallel line? So what if you have a, par a parallel line here? So this parallel line basically says that there is a change in time, but there is no change in displacement, no change in position. So for a parallel line, we know that the slope is zero. If the slope is zero, it means that the velocity here is zero. So because the slope is zero here, we can say that the velocity here is also zero. So this is what we call a zero velocity curve. So this line here in a position time graph, a parallel line represents zero velocity. So this is how you can interpret velocity graphically.
in a in a in a position time graph now how would you represent instantaneous velocity in a position time graph so let's consider a graph where there is no velocity is not constant but rather changing velocity so let's say that there is a changing velocity here so if there is a check and remember that here the curve is really small in the downward position here but as you go upward it's increasing so there is a really small slope to a really high slope which here, here represents increasing velocity so if i want to know what is the instantaneous velocity at a single point in time let's say for example at this point in time i want to know what is the velocity so how would you do that is you would draw a straight line parallel line and at that point you would draw a tangent curve so a tangent is simply a straight line uh, perpendicular to that particular point so when you draw a line here so the slope of this line represents so the slope of this line represents the instantaneous velocity So the slope of this line represents the instantaneous velocity. You don't need to calculate it every time, but remember that this is how you can find instantaneous velocity of an object's path. So this is the idea behind velocity and displacement. So hope that was clear. Okay, let's move on to section two, acceleration. So in this section, we'll try to describe motions in terms of changing velocity compare graphical representations of accelerated and non-accelerated motion and we'll try to apply kinematic equations to calculate distance time velocity under conditions of constant acceleration so how do you talk, talk about acceleration here so acceleration is basically the rate at which the velocity changes over time so similar to velocity so which is the rate of change of displacement acceleration is the rate of change of velocity over time so it's the change in velocity over change in time. So that value is generally written as average acceleration. So whenever, when, do, when does an object accelerate? So when it accelerates, so it accelerates when its speed, direction and or both change. So it can be either or, it can be not changing its speed but it can change its direction. Also then there will be a change in acceleration. Because remember that acceleration is a vector quantity. So because it has both a direction and magnitude so thus acceleration is also a vector quantity now let's talk about changes in velocity so let's consider there is a train that is moving to the right so that there is a displacement and velocity that are positive and when you take a slope of the velocity time graph becomes the average acceleration so and when the velocity in the positive direction is increasing so the acceleration is positive as at the point a so at point a it's positive and when there is when it's a straight line and it's a general line so notice that here it's increasing here so here it's a parallel line so there is no velocity no acceleration and at c there is a negative acceleration so remember that when there is an upwards positive slope it's positive acceleration when it is parallel it's no acceleration and when it is negative slope there is negative acceleration so this is how we can describe the acceleration part so these are the sign conventions we can think about so when the velocity is positive and the initial velocity is positive and the acceleration is positive the body is trying to speed up when both velocity and acceleration are negative it's speeding up but in the reverse so when one is positive power velocity is positive acceleration is negative the body is slowing down when the velocity is negative the acceleration is positive the body is slowing down and you have negative or positive provided the acceleration is zero then that's an example of constant velocity when the velocity is zero and the acceleration is negative or positive the body is speeding up from rest remember that initially it starts at zero and when both are at zero both of the body stays at rest now so so now let's talk about motion with constant acceleration so whenever the velocity changes uniformly so when there is a uniform change in velocity we call that an acceleration being constant so in a velocity time graph 
So you can think of it as a straight line. Notice that the slope here represents the acceleration. So the slope equals acceleration. So when the slope is constant throughout the entire line, so that means that's an example of a constant acceleration. So the relationship between displacement, time, velocity and constant acceleration generally can be expressed by the equations shown on the next slide. So these are called the equations of motion with constant acceleration. So the first one is going to be, so let me write it down in a separate slide. So displacement equals half that of the initial velocity plus final velocity times the total time. So that's the first equation. Next, the second equation is the final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times delta t. Next is displacement equals initial velocity times time plus half of acceleration times time whole square. And the last equation is going to be Vf square equals final velocity equals initial velocity square plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. So these are what we call the equations of motion. So these are the four equations that you, that are used to describe equations of constantly accelerated motion. So these are called equations of constantly accelerated motion. Now, let's continue our talk on equations of motion with a problem. Let's try to use the problem to understand how equations of motion generally work. So let's try and solve this problem. So what is given here? So you have a person pushing a stroller starts from rest. So this is an important point to remember. First that the stroller is starting from rest. And it uniformly accelerates at a rate of 0 0.500 meter per second squared. So whenever you see the term uniformly accelerating, it means it's constant. And what is the velocity of the stroller at, after it has traveled? 4.75 meters. So how would you calculate this particular value here? First, write down the data that it is there. So the acceleration A. So the acceleration A is constant which is uniformly accelerated. So 0 0.500 meter per second square. And the person starts at rest. So the initial velocity is zero. And the person travels a total distance of 4.75 meters. So delta x is 4.75 meters. So they're asking us to calculate what is the velocity of the stroller after. So which means we are trying to calculate Vf. So from all the equations, what are the what is the equation that has all of these variables? So the equation that has all of these variables is the last equation. So the last equation is Vf square equals Vi square plus 2a into delta x. So Vi, Vi square is 0 square plus 2 times a here is 0 0.500 times delta x is 4.75. So Vf square, calculate the value for that. So that value is going to be 2 times 0 0.5 times 4.75. So that value is going to be 4.75. So we want to find Vf. So Vf is going to be square root of 4.75. So let's try to find square root of answer that value becomes 2.179 or we can write uh, we can write it into 2.18 so the final velocity is 2.18 meter per second so this is how you can solve the problem now there is one other important part to remember is that here they are trying to give you the answer here, velocity here, but velocity also requires direction. But whenever you write the square, this can be positive or negative. How do you know it's positive or negative? Is because displacement is positive. So obviously velocity will also be positive. So remember the velocity always takes in the direction of the displacement itself. 
So that's how you can solve this problem. So with that, we end the section on acceleration.